We have our active starter. We've had some professional advice from a baker. I think it's time we bake some sourdough. So hopefully now you're all very excited and ready to get our first sourdough loaf in the oven. Today I'm going to show you my all-purpose kind of go-to sourdough recipe. It's a white sourdough, it's fairly straightforward, you don't need lots of ingredients, and it's a kind of a good starting point for your sourdough journey. Now if you've been feeding your sourdough starter and you've got it in the fridge resting, this is the point you want to get it out. So say you want to bake this loaf, you are going to get it in the oven on Sunday morning. We're going to make the dough over Saturday. So on Friday, take it out first thing in the morning, give it a feed, then in the evening before you go to bed, feed it again, then in the morning it'll be ready to make our loaf. We don't want to just give one feed because sometimes the starter doesn't fully activate again after it's been dormant in the fridge. So at least two, sometimes even three feeds is a good idea before we get started. Okay, now we can actually get started. Oh, and also to note, if you've been making the starter for seven days and you've actually not put it in the fridge and the starter is at room temperature, we just want to make sure that it's at its height of its rising and falling schedule. So give it a feed the night before you want to use it and once it's doubled in size, that's when you want to start the recipe. So the lavan is basically the start of our bread and it's very similar, if not identical, to feeding the starter. So we're going to take 25 grams of our mature starter, one that's at the top of its rising and falling schedule, and we're going to mix that with 50 grams of our flour mix that we use to create our starter, and then 50 mils of water at 27 degrees Celsius. And we're just going to mix that together. We're then going to cover that and set that aside uh, until it has doubled in size. Now, I like to do this in a slightly warm environment, so my preference is often to put this in the oven just with the light turned on, not with any heat, it just creates enough ambient uh, warmth in that oven that it rises nicely. And we want to do this until it's doubled in size. So now that our lavan is nicely developing, it's rising really well, but it's not quite got to its finishing point, we're going to do what's called an autolyse. Now that's not complicated or a scary word, it's actually a very simple process. All it means is taking our flour and mixing it with our water. Now we do that about an hour before the uh, lavan is finished, that's my preference anyway, and the reason for that is it gives the flour a chance to properly hydrate, which gives us a dough with a nice stretch to it, or what's known as extensibility. And the reason for that is a dough with that quality tends to lead to a more open and nicer textured sourdough. That stuff we're trying to replicate at home that we buy from the amazing bakeries. Now, knowing when to do this is a little bit tricky, but don't worry because the timing's not that important. I do it for an hour, but some recipes will do it for three. Some people will just do it for 15, 20 minutes. So don't worry too much. I think an hour is a good amount of time. It really creates a nice extensible dough and it leads to a bread dough that I really like working with and isn't too tricky to work with and leads to a really delicious, nicely open sourdough. So the way that I tell that it's ready to do the autolies is I mark where the Levan started and when it's about three quarters of the way to doubling in size, that's when I will do it because that's about an hour or so left. Now, when it comes to the flour, I'm using a mixture of white bread flour and white spelt flour. Now, the reason for this is spelt obviously has flavour, but it also has a nice quality of making the dough extra extensible. So, I always add a little bit in there as reassurance almost. Now, it's only 450 grams of white bread flour and then just 50 grams of spelt. So, only a very small amount, but I always add it in there because it really makes a nice dough to work with. And I think it's a really good starting point if you're just starting off with sourdough. Now, if you want to increase the flavour, add more depth, you can also take out 50 grams of the white bread flour and add 50 grams of something like rye or something like wholemeal. But I would suggest you start with this because it's a good, easy-ish dough to work with. So we're going to add our flour to a bowl. And then to that we're going to add our water. But we're going to keep back just a little bit, 25 grams, and we'll use that later. So we're going to add, at this stage, 350 grams of water, and that's because I'm doing a loaf that is 75% hydration. Now, if you're new to making sourdough, 75% hydration doughs can be a little bit tricky to handle, so if you want, you can happily reduce this down to 70%, which would be a total of 350 mils of water, so we'd use 325 mils at this stage. Then, all we're gonna do is use your hand just to form this into a nice 
dough. So you want to squeeze the dough through your fingers. It really helps to make sure there's no dry pockets of flour left behind. And you only want to do this just until everything is mixed. We're not trying to work the dough or develop any gluten. So once we've fully mixed the dough, there's no dry pockets of flour. We're just going to scrape all of the dough off our fingers with a bread scraper. Trust me, these plastic scrapers are the best thing when making sourdough, so make sure you have a couple. And to cover the dough, to cover the bowl, I'm just going to use a shower cap. I take these from every hotel that I stay in, and the reason is simply I can reuse them multiple times, unlike cling film, which you can reuse once. So it's just a nice way of reducing our single-use plastic. And then we're just gonna leave that aside with our lavan until the land's finished rising, so about an hour. So bulk fermentation is basically where the main body of the work in this recipe is. It's where the strength is gonna come from, it's where we're gonna build the gluten, and it's also where we're gonna get some initial rise in the dough. So the first thing we need to do is take our lavan and make sure it's ready to bake with. We're gonna do a float test. So for the float test, all we have to do is take a scoop of our Levan, tablespoon or so, and add that to some water. If it floats, it's full of gas, it's ready to be baked with. If it sinks, we just need to leave it a little bit longer. So we're gonna add 100 grams of our Levan to our Ottilie's dough. And then we're just going to dimple it into the dough and we just want to kind of distribute this evenly throughout our dough. So because this can be a little bit tricky to actually mix together, what I find works really well is just lift it and kind of fold it over itself. So once the dough feels a little bit more uniform, we're just going to leave that aside for about 15 minutes before we add the salt. So for the salt, we're basically going to do the same thing that we did with the Laban. We're going to sprinkle it over the dough, and then that last 25 mils of water we've been keeping, we're going to pour that on top as well, which will help dissolve the salt. Then we're just going to use our fingers just to dimple it into the dough, and then basically repeat that same kind of folding motion, just mixing the dough until everything is nice combined and we have a uniform dough again. And it will feel like this is separating, it will look a bit weird, it will look a bit kind of gross. But just keep going until you have a nice uniform dough. So that is the finished texture of the dough. It's uniform, it's come together. It's still a little bit shaggy, that's absolutely fine. Again, as we always do, get used to doing this a lot, just scrape down the bowl so there's no dry bits. And then we're just going to cover it and leave it again for about four hours to allow it to bulk ferment. Now again, at this stage, I like to use the oven mainly because it's a nice controlled temperature of about 28 degrees Celsius, which is perfect for fermenting and rising the bread. Now, if you're gonna do this at room temperature and your room is a little bit colder, this will take a little bit extra time. So during this bulk fermentation stage of the recipe, we want to build some strength into the dough. So we're gonna do some stretch and folds. And don't worry, this is not an exercise for you, this is boot camp for your dough. So we're gonna do four sets of these spaced 30 minutes apart. To do this, we're gonna take a wet hand, we're gonna dip it underneath the dough, and we're gonna lift it up, just gently stretching it until you feel some resistance, and then fold it over itself. And we're gonna do that four times at the north, east, south, and west points of the bowl. And this is what's known as one set. So once we've done four sets of folds, we're then gonna leave the dough to rest, and that's what the rest of the bulk fermentation is. It's just rest. You'll know the dough is ready for shaping when you can see that it's really nicely fermenting. So the key thing to look for is A, the dough will have a bit of a jiggle when you rock the bowl, but also if you look around the edges, you should have some nice bubbling of the dough. At this point, we can turn the dough out. So we're gonna use two tools at this point. We're gonna use a metal dough scraper with a nice straight edge, and then your plastic dough scraper. And these two will be your best friends at this stage. So using the plastic dough scraper, we're just gonna tease the dough out onto our lightly floured half of the work surface. Just tease that out until it comes out. And then what we're gonna do is a, what's known as a pre-shape. And this is just a quick shaping. This is not detailed. We don't wanna do this for too much. We just wanna bring it into a loose ball shape. So all you're gonna do is go underneath the dough and it should be nicely floured so it shouldn't stick too much. And then just gently kind of fold it over a few times to form a rough ball shape and then turn that over. At this stage, we're just gonna leave it covered with a kitchen cloth for about 20 minutes 
so it relaxes a little bit before we do the full shaping. So whilst the dough is relaxing, let's talk about what we're gonna prove the dough in. Now, I like the classic a cane banneton. This is the one that I use. Um, it's really easy to get hold of these days. You can get them online and even a lot of bakeries sell them. This is kind of a really classic choice. They also come in the batard shape, the kind of oblong shape. Sometimes they also come with cloth liners like this. Now this can be really handy if you're starting out because the cloth liners help the dough release a little bit easier. So that's something to bear in mind. Now, if you don't want to buy any more equipment, that's totally fine. You could also just use a regular Pyrex mixing bowl. Just place a clean kitchen towel in it, and we're going to dust that with flour. And actually, when we're talking about the bannetons or the bowl, they all need to be dusted with flour to make sure that they release the dough easily. Now, the best thing you can do for this isn't use regular bread flour, because that will just get absorbed into the dough, and then the dough will stick itself to the banneton. What you want to use is rice flour, because rice flour doesn't get absorbed, it creates a nice barrier between the dough and the banneton, and it will release really easily. So now that our dough has relaxed a little bit, we're just going to dust it with a little bit of flour, because we're going to turn that over onto this side. So we're going to have to work very quickly with confidence here. I'm just going to loosen the outside of the dough a little bit, and then we're going to go quickly underneath, and then turn it straight over like that. So at this point, we want to work again with confidence and speed. So we're just going to pull out the side on both and push them in. We're just trying to stretch the dough just a little bit, then pull out the top, push that in, and the bottom over like that. And that's kind of your basic batard shape. You could put that straight in the tin. But what I'm going to do is just make sure we've got very little flour on the surface. And we just need to form this into a a tighter ball. So just working with lightly dusted hands, we're going to put our fingers at the front and just pull and you can see it tightens up into a really nice ball shape. And we only want to do this a couple of times just to get our shape. If we do it too much, you'll end up with rips on the top. So we just want to do this a couple of times. So again, this is where we need to work with confidence. We have our lightly dusted uh, pruning basket and we're just going to go underneath again straight over and then into our basket. I'm going to cover that with our hairnet and that's going to go in the fridge overnight to prove. So before we actually bake the loaf let's talk about equipment for baking the bread. Now this is recipe designed for a home oven, nothing fancy, nothing complicated, and you only need two things. One of them you may already have at home. So we need something to bake the bread in. We want to create steam. Now some people will add ice or a tray of water to the oven, but I prefer to use Tartine's method, which is to bake it inside a cast iron pot. So if you have a large Le Creuset or a, you know, some sort of big cast iron pot, that will work absolutely fine. My preference though is a lodge cast iron combi cooker, which is this little thing. It's not a little thing, it's a beast, it's very heavy. Um, but the benefit of this is it's like an upside down cast iron pan. So it's actually just easier when you put the bread in because you can just lift the lid off and you've got a lot less drop to put the bread in. Whereas with a cast iron pan like Le Creuset, you've got to drop a good distance. So this is just a little bit easier. And if you're prone to burning yourself, this is a nice investment. So the other thing we need is some sort of blade. When we bake the sourdough, we slash it before it goes in the oven. And this is done for a couple of reasons. One, it looks really nice, it adds personality, you can add design to the bread. But the real reason to do it is more technical, and it's to make sure that the bread opens up fully and in a controlled manner. By slashing it, it means the bread will expand properly, we get a better spring, and it means that you'll get a more open textured bread. But also, if you don't slash it, it will just rip and tear the crust in random places. So if you pop it in the oven, you don't slash it, you won't be able to control how it looks in the end. And sometimes that looks really nice. There are styles of bread that you don't slash, you just allow to rip naturally. But really for this style of sourdough, I prefer to slash it. So this is the classic, this is a lamb, and it's basically a razor blade held in place that you can slash the bread with. This is another version of Alarm, it's just a different style, I quite like it, it's very easy to control. If you don't want to buy any more equipment, you can also just use a bread knife, just make sure it's nice and sharp when we're using it. So about an hour before we want to bake the bread, the first thing we need to do is put that vessel into the oven and turn it on to its highest temperature to make sure that everything is thoroughly preheated. 
The reason for this is when the bread initially goes in the oven, we want it very hot so we can get a really good oven spring so we get the perfect texture. So once the dough is out of the fridge, we need a couple of things. One is a crumpled piece of parchment. Obviously you need the blade that you're gonna use, and some scissors as well as some very good oven gloves because the pot in the oven is gonna be so unbelievably hot. So we wanna make sure we don't burn ourselves. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our loaf and we're just gonna carefully take off the covering and then we're just gonna put that on top and we're gonna turn the dough over. As with a lot of these things in sourdough, this just needs a bit of confidence. Put your hand on top turn it over and then if you've dusted this well it should just come out nice and easily. Now depending on how you like the finish of the bread you can just dust it with a little bit of flour or you can just leave it as it is and you'll get those nice ridge marks from the banneton if that's what you're using. So when it comes to our slashing this is another point we need confidence because if you dawdle or do it slowly it won't cut as nicely, so all you're gonna do is keep the blade lowish to the dough. We don't want an angle that's straight down. We want something that's more flat to the dough, and that means that as it bakes, that cut will open up and we get that nice ear. So with confidence, we're just going to place it on the side and we're gonna cut. So you can see that the dough is opening up slightly, but that's exactly what we want. So now we just need to cut the excess parchment from around the dough, and we're gonna transfer it to our cast iron pot. So the reason we use the parchment is it just makes it a little bit easier to handle and move the dough without having to touch it too much. So being very careful because this is incredibly hot, we're just going to lift the dough up and place it into the pan and then working quickly, we're going to put the lid on top and get that in the oven. So we're going to cook that at the very highest temperature of our oven for about 25 minutes. Whilst it's in that pot, it's gonna steam from the moisture in the bread, which means we're gonna get a nice open loaf. And then to brown it and set the crust to darken it, after 25 minutes, we're gonna turn the oven down a little bit, take off the lid and let it cook fully until it's the perfect darkness. Now, this is where you have a bit of choice. I like my bread dark. Some would say burnt, but I like it really, really dark. It has that really beautiful, dark crust, it has tons of flavor, and I really like the texture it gives. Some people prefer it a little bit lighter, that's totally fine. Just bake it until it's the color of your choice. But it needs to be in the oven for about 40, 45 minutes to make sure that it's fully cooked through. When the bread is nice and dark, we're gonna take it out of the oven, and we're gonna leave it for about an hour on a wire rack to cool. The reason we wanna leave it for a long time is if we cut into it too early, the bread has a chance of being a bit gummy inside, so we need to leave it to like, fully set before we cut into it. Now a good sign that we've done a good job is if you look on the outside you'll see lots of little bubbles and that's a really good sign that the bread was properly fermented and a good sign that we might get a really nice texture on the inside. You also see that we've got a really nice ear, it's opened up nicely, it's got a really nice crackly crust and if you listen carefully as you squeeze the bread you get that perfect crackly crust sound. Okay we've waited long enough, let's go into loaf and see what it's like. Do I do a happy dance when I slice with the loaf and it looks this good? Maybe. Do I show that on camera? Definitely not. This is definitely, you know, it's not the easiest thing to bake, but with a little bit of practice, you can make the most amazing homemade bread that smells and tastes amazing. And there is nothing more satisfying than making something like this. I really hope you give it a go. I really hope you like it, and I really hope you've liked this series. There'll be one more episode, and that'll be how to use the discard that you have to make something else. But until then, I really hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait to see the loaves you start making. If you like the series, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below about your sourdough adventure, and subscribe to the channel because I make new baking videos every single week.